Now, we are so excited. Our first guest this evening is best known for his roles in movies such as Gladiator, A Beautiful Mind, The Insider, and American Gangster. However, it's his musical talents we are speaking to Russell Crowe about this evening. Yes, Zainab, this man can really do absolutely everything. Oh, yes. And now, before we chat to the man himself, here's a taster of what audiences can expect when they come to Russell Crowe's indoor garden party. So dark and so moody. And I can't believe I'm about to say this. I hope my husband Arthur is recording the show this evening. Russell Crowe, welcome to the six o'clock show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Buonasera. 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 Russell joining us from Rome, the glamour. Ooh, very. And we're here in Dublin. Russell wins, Russell wins. Well. Russell, you are coming back to Ireland and this time for a concert. Tell us all about your indoor garden party and what audiences can expect. Well, the indoor garden party is sort of an umbrella name that I've been using for the last decade or more, basically just to cover whatever I'm um, getting into with music. And at the moment, it centers around a band that I've been working with the last three or four years called the Gentleman Barbers, but it also includes a young lady from Cabin called Lorraine O'Reilly. She'll be there with us. And opening the show for us at the Gaiety Theatre on July 1st is going to be Janet Devlin. So just as when we played in the Olympia in 2017, people can expect that by the end of the show, they'll be up on their feet and having a bit of a, uh, on the rantan, so to speak, and having a bit of fun. Well, well, we're very excited to have you. And we love that Janet Devlin is going to be opening your show in the Olympia because you had her tour with you in Australia. And actually when she was here last, she told us how you would reach out to her. What was it, what was it about Janet's voice and music that you loved so much? Well, I, I got sent uh, her singing an Ed Sheeran song by Ed Sheeran, actually. And I, it just arrested me. And I just really loved her interpretation of, uh, of his song. And um, I just reached out to her on tour last year in Australia. She did the whole tour, man. She did 23 shows with us down there. And then uh, she also did uh, shows with us in Rome and Bologna last year as well. You know, she's just got a, an incredible stage presence. She walks out on that stage and she just takes people's eye, you know, and she has this duality about her. You know, on one hand, she's this angelic Stevie Nicks kind of personality. But on the other hand, she's like, you know, uh, a dock hand down at the wharf. So, you know, she, she will <laughs> cut to the heart of a situation very simply, you know. So I, I just love that that combination of things about her. You know, she's got a beautiful singing voice and she's got an amazing stage presence. Uh, Russell, I have to ask you, is there a certain feeling that you get on stage with your band that perhaps you don't get when you're on a movie set? Or are the feelings, is the feeling quite alike? Well, the preparation's always similar, you know, in that, you know, there's a lot of detail to cover with you get. When you're getting ready for a 40 or so tour, a show tour, you, you've got to definitely make sure that you're physically ready to do that, you know, in a similar way that you might uh, take on all the details of a character that you're about to play. But, you know, for the most part, when you're on a film set, you know, you, you, you're working really in a very sheltered environment, you know, and... and you know, the, the thing that you do one day might be from page one and the thing that you do the next day might, might be from page 55. And, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of details and things that you've got to take in and understand. But the performance is really, a you know, it's kind of like akin to golf or something. You know, you, you know the performance is about you challenging yourself, you know. Uh, when we walk on stage with the band, it's it's a, it's anarchic. You never know what's going to happen. You know everything's completely free, and and uh, the show could go in any particular any particular way. And you see, you know, when I made the decision to live a creative life, which is a long, long time ago now, but you know, the first thing that I did in that pursuit was walk out on stage with the guitar to sing a song, 
And so for me, you know, like some actors, you know, Anthony Hopkins is one example. I was working with him just after he shot Silence of the Lambs and he was about to go and do a season of King Lear, you know, and that to him was getting him back to his centre and rebalancing. And for me, I do that sort of rebalancing with the band on stage, you know. Amazing. And I have to ask you about a movie. I, I tried to do an impression of, of this movie, the, Ex the Pope's Exorcist. I watched it on a flight recently uh, to New York and I wouldn't be brave enough to watch that movie on my own. I felt like there was some comfort in a plane full of other passengers. But you shot that movie here in Ireland, in Dublin and then in Limerick. So how did you enjoy your time here in Ireland when you were shooting that movie? I absolutely loved it, man. Absolutely loved it, you know. I, uh, I was staying just outside of Dublin and I'd ride my bicycle every day to the studio in Bray. And, uh, you know, some days it was wet, but it was the summer, so we got a lot of sunny days. So, um, you know, I'd find myself just cruising along by the, by the waterside, then knowing I had to turn uphill <laughs> to get to the studio. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I really, really enjoyed it. I, and the sensibility of the Irish crew and their professionalism and the things that they could achieve, it was fantastic. It was a great experience. I was wondering, would that character get a spin-off? Because there's more that you could do with that character. Well, the, that's in discussion at the moment. The original producers have... Um, uh, and they originally got the uh, kickoff from the studio for not just for one sequel, but for two. Oh. Um, but there's been a change of studio heads at the moment, so that's going around in a few circles at the moment. But very definitely, man, that we set that character up that you could, you know, uh, take him out and put him into a lot of different circumstances. And remember that uh, the, the the man that's based on Gabriele Amort, mm -hmm. he wrote 12 books, mm -hmm. so we have more than enough source material to to do um, one or two more of those films. But that probably won't be till next year. It was, it was the noises in the movie, like. <laughs> <laughs> All of that, like, I was literally jumping out of the seat. Oh, that it was, was fabulous. That, that was, was just Russell. Yeah, that was just, <laughs> he played the character so well. He's been doing that sound all day, Russell, so we have you to thank for it. So thank you so much for that. Um, I have to ask you, when you were here in Ireland, were you doing what a lot of Hollywood actors seem to do? Did you go for a dip in the sea? Did you brave the elements? You know what? We were going to do that on this one particular day. But I never got around to it, so it's one of the things on my list that I haven't yet, I haven't yet plunged into the Irish Sea, but I, I will at, at some point in the future. Um, but we had a run when we were there of, of 25 degree days, and I remember watching the news one night, and they put out a warning that there was going to be a heat wave, you know. And yeah, you know, I'm Antipodean. I, you know, 25 degrees for us is like you know an average late autumn day. <laughs> you know, <so laughs> Barmy, very. I know you wouldn't. You have to go if you have to. Next time you have to go for a dip, even if it's less than 25 degrees, Russell. Don't thank me though. But you have to well, do it. I, we, as I said, we were, we were going to do it, and then something happened. The director needed to talk to me or whatever, so we uh, we changed. The, Tax, so, but I do, uh, I do have that in the back of my mind as something I've got to achieve. It's always the director's fault. It is. Always the director's <laughs> fault. You've made so many incredible movies so far in your career, and you really seem to to give everything to the roles that you play. Is it true that on the set of Robin Hood, you broke both your legs, you carried on, and did not seek any medical attention? So, Russell Crowe, are you okay? Yeah, that was the thing. That's it. You know, the 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 time gap between having the injury and finding out that the injury was significantly more serious than I thought was a decade, you know? Oh. Um, but I, you know, we were doing this stunt on Robin Hood and the day was running away from us. So, you know, we had this big conversation. It's a whole sort of thing I have to describe. There's a castle, it's on fire. There's 600 extras, there's arrows flying everywhere. There's fire pots. I've got to go up this portcullis, grab this guy, then jump off. It's about a 14 foot jump, right? And um, in the conversation about all the various details we had, well, the one thing that we forgot to do was prep the ground for a jump, you know, because <clears throat> when it's a movie, what you normally do is you go and you hit this with the spade and you dig up, thing and you hide a pad under the dirt, you know. Um, and uh, we hadn't done that. And I didn't notice that until I was in the air. And I was trying to land on the balls of my feet, but the ground, because we'd built the castle there, was very, very uneven. No. And I ended up landing on both my heels. No. So that just sent a shock up through my body. Yeah. And 
you know, I had a, a few weeks there where I'm still on the set. We're still doing the castle siege and everything, but I can I can barely walk, you know. And But this is the thing, though. You've got to understand that if you put your hand up for a day off on a movie, you can end up costing the production a ton of money, you know. So I just sort of uh, gritted my teeth and went on with it. When I was doing The Loudest Voice in New York, which was – a very long winter of, uh, you know, prosthetic makeup. So sitting in the makeup chair three to four hours a day, most of my scenes in that show are all, you know, yelling orders from behind a desk. And I started to get these really strange sort of pains in my leg. Now, as it turned out, it was really just the winter time and that, you know, because when you add that, when you add it up in the course of shooting that TV show, The Loudest Voice, I was in the makeup chair for 21 days of my life. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. It seems crazy when you say it like that, yeah. right? So as, as it was, as soon as I got back home and started exercising and stuff, I was fine. But on the way home, I stopped in and saw these specialist doctors in Los Angeles and we did MRIs and uh, x-rays and everything. And the doctor said to me, when did you break your legs? I was like, what are you talking about? I've never broken my leg. And he looked at it again and he said, from what I can see here, this would have been about 10 years ago, you fractured both your legs. And then that moment of impact on that moment and Robin Hood came back to me. So, yeah, I mean, you know, when I say I could barely walk, I'm serious. There was like days where my the step was like about four inches <laughs> wide. But, you know, you're in the middle of a film like that and you, and you just carry on, you know, which it's, there's so many injuries like that that you pick up on film and that you don't really talk about because if it happens on a film set, people don't believe it's a real injury, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just as fake as the film, you know? Arguably, the biggest, you know, the film that changed your career, changed your life, is getting a sequel with our very own Paul Meskel yes. going to be in it. Um, we want to ask, do you have one piece of advice for Paul about, you know, what being in a Ridley Scott movie does for you? Um, well, it depends on what Ridley Scott movie you're in. There's plenty of Ridley Scott movies that have done absolutely nothing for the people. In them. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of shade. Uh, here, for, here for a bit of shade. Nice. You know, he's already he's already finished that film, and they're in post production. And uh, I, from what I've heard, he and Ridley got on famously. So um, you know, I've also heard it was a very difficult shoot. But in a funny way, when you're doing something big, it quite often is the case, you know, and, and quite often difficult shoots make, make great films. So um, I don't know anything about the story. You know, my character, you know, passed away at the end of the first one, you may remember. Yeah. So it really has absolutely nothing to do with me. Um, but I'm sure that uh, he's had a great experience. I remember, you know, for me, when I look back in that period of my life, that was, you know, it's a, it was an incredibly exciting thing for me to be on a, on a film set with Ridley, and, which I've done, you know, five films with Ridley, and he's probably still my favourite director to work with because he's, you know, he can really see the world that he's trying to capture. And, and you know, if you buy into what he's doing, it um, it's an amazing experience. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's had an amazing experience, uh, uh, Paul, and I uh, wish him all the best. We hope his legs are OK, yeah. just in case. Uh, now, back to the music. You've had some fabulous guests join you on stage. Michael Bublé joined you in Australia. So, Russ, our last question to you is, is there any performer, if there's one performer that could join you on stage for this tour, who would it be? Well, I'm not sure. You said the, the reason that people turn up and get on stage is because, you know, we don't, we never discuss uh, who it's going to be oh. or announce them or whatever. They just rock up, you know. On the last tour, we had people like Michael Bublé, but we also had Rita Ora jumped up Ooh. for a song. We had RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan get up for a song. Um, so, and over time, you know, many, many years ago, we had Elvis Costello get up. We've had Sting get up. Uh, Hugh Jackman jumped up at a gig in New York as well. You know, you, you, you never know the, uh, who it might be. I think the last time we played in Dublin, one of the blokes from Westlife got up and, and had a sing. <laughs> Oh, my God. One of them. One, one, of, them. Them. one of the Maddies. Yes. Oh, wow. Russell Crowe, thank you so much for joining us on the 6 o'clock Thank you so show. much, Russell. Thank yes. you so much. Russell will be at the Gaiety Theatre on the 1st of July. Tickets are available now. It's going to be a fabulous show yes. at Ticketmaster.ie. Get your tickets quick.